in our last week's lecture, we are talking about the, we have reviewed some knowledge in the sec, uh, signal test system, right? And we talk about how those uh, knowledge can be applied in the computing system. Then uh, we see that the two important applications for signals in communication system. First one is modulation. Second one is filtering. So for filtering, for filtering, we need to know how to design a filter. Okay, how to design a filter. We study from a very typical one, which is the bubble filter, right? Bubble filter. Is the, here we talk about is the passive bubble filter, right? So <coughs> compared to other type of filter, the bubble filter has a most flat top, but it's running off time. It's running off region. Slope is very, it's very small. Okay, so it means that you will run off slowly compared to other type of uh, filter. Then, in terms of how to design a bubble filter, we know that we can study always study from a low pass protector. Okay, so no matter what kind of filter you want to design, no matter the practical low pass, with a cutoff frequency greater than one million per second, or Band pass filter or high pass filter. You always get starting from a low pass prototype, right? So we, how we can design a low pass filter by using this technology. So here you see some examples. First step, we need to determine the, num the order of the filter based on the given parameters. So this is what we discussed last lecture, right? So this is the design a low pass filter with its cutoff frequency 4 kHz and uh, the rolling off uh, uh, the rolling off of this filter should be determined based on this description here. From 4K to 40K, it must roll it off. Uh, it must reduce or attenuate at 40 dB. Okay, actually the question I said here is not ac very accurate. Later I will see why, okay? <coughs> so first step, we need to determine the order of this filter. All the filter determines the number of uh, L and C's in the circuit. Right? The meter is a shunt capacitor of several inductor, so called a pi type and p type. Right? Okay. Because we know that a bubble filter load up at 20 times n dB per decade. Okay. So this 20 times n times number per decade from 4K to 40K. Okay, from 4K to 40K. So, must greater or equal to 40 dB. So, solve this inequality to get that the minimum number of integer value for n is 2. Here. Okay, satisfy this inequality. You can choose a, high, a larger value for n. That's, that's good because you get a better performance, but remember that you are going to have high cost in terms of number of components, in terms of maintenance cost, right? But you cannot choose some value like 2.5 or 2.3 because this N is number of L and C's in your low pass filter. You cannot choose 2.3 inductor and capacitor, right? Must be integer, positive integer. Okay, so based on the n chosen, we can find these parameters for the low pass prototype. We're still talking about low pass prototype now, all right? So based on the n chosen, we can come up with the low pass prototype with an order n equal to two. Means that they have two parameters. Okay, let's get two parameters, G1 and G2. G1 and G2, you can get it from the table. Okay, don't worry about it. You can get it from the table or can get it by using this formula here. Okay, we have talking about this formula previously, right? Remember? Yeah, this one. But don't worry, because we haven't shown you how to divide this one, we're going, not going to test you how to divide this, this formula. If you need it, it's going to be given. Okay, don't worry about this one. Actually, actually this one you can find from any reference group. So, by computing all the value for n and k, actually I can come up with this table. Two, well, n equal to two. We're looking at this row, okay? For n equal to two, 
you can have two parameters, g1 and g2, both are equal to square root of 2, which is 1.4142. Okay, of course, let's get it. Okay, so we have two parameters. It happens to be both are square root of 2, but we cannot generalize this because if you look at this table, only for n equal to 2, these two parameters are equal. Right? For other papers, like this one, they are not equal. These two are also not equal. Alright? And also for this one, they are not equal. But if you look at the table carefully, what do you see? Actually, it's symmetric, right? For example, for this one. This one equals to the last one. The first one equals to the last one. This one equals to the this one cannot find another same value. Whereas for this one, it's also symmetric. These two are equal, this one and this one are equal. Right? Okay, so we have uh, two parameters, and for order n equal to 2, it happens to be equal. That means these two components have the same value for me, but the unit may not be the same because. For two components, no matter you are going to choose pi type or p type, they either be uh, inductor or capacitor, cannot be the same. That means cannot both are capacitor or both are inductor. Right? Must be one, one must be a uh, capacitor, the other one must be inductor, or the other way. Okay. It depends on the configuration you're going to choose. Okay, so so far we're still talking about low pass product of all the n equals to two, right? Then, Next step, based on the table we give us here, okay, we already pick out this L and C for the, the, for the low pass prototype. Next step, we need to transform to a practical low pass filter. Okay, so the difference between a practical low pass filter and the low pass prototype, what's the difference here? It's just the cutoff frequency are different, right? Because if you have a low pass filter, you cut off frequency one radius per second. I just use this. One radius per second is very low frequency. Actually, not very useful. In practical case, we may need a cutoff frequency must be 4 kHz, 100 kHz, and etc. Right? So, practical case, this omega C cannot be one radius per second anymore. Okay? So, to design such a practical low pass filter, I start from a low pass prototype first. Okay, then I can pick out this L and C for low pass prototype. Okay, next step, I need to map this L and C to a practical case. Okay, in a practical low pass filter, originally if you have low pass prototype inductor, it's still the inductor, but the parameter must be modi modified here, like this. L from here, right, divided by omega C. What is omega C? What is omega C? Omega C is the frequency in radians per second, okay? Which means it's a cyclic frequency. Okay, it's a cyclic frequency here. <coughs> Similarly, for the capacitor. Originally, if you're in your circuit, low pass prototype, you see a capacitor. So you will replace this capacitor with another capacitor and its parameter modified by C divided by omega C, again, Cutoff frequency in radius per second. Okay. <coughs> uh, there's one thing I want to highlight here. Just now we are talking about design a low pass program, a uh, low pass filter, right? Then how about if we want to design a practical filter, which is a high pass? And what do we need to do? How to start? We're still starting from a low pass prototype, right? With the given parameters, we can we can figure out what's the order of n. Okay, then we can figure out what's the g1 all the way to gn. Okay, means that we can find out the corresponding low pass prototype. Okay, then we transform the parameters. If originally in the low pass prototype is an inductor, so this time to a high pass now. We need to change the original inductor to a capacitor. Okay? And its 
parameter is modified like this. Okay, the comparative one, they're different. All right, they're different. Why? Because this is a low pass, this is high pass. Similarly, if originally it's a capacitor in a low pass prototype, now we need to modify to an inductor with this value. Okay, again, omega C is a cover potential in radians per second. Okay, radians per second. So this is different. <coughs> okay, so according to the table I showed you just now, we have figured out this low pass prototype, the corresponding low pass prototype prototype for this low pass filter, okay, n equal to 2, g1 equal to square root of 2, g2 equal to square root of 2. Then I need to transform this parameter for the low pass prototype to a practical one. First step, I need to find out what's the practical color frequency, right? Okay, so if that is, if color frequency must be 4 kHz. Okay, so in the exam, everybody Everybody has to resist the temptation to divide this value by 4k, alright? If you divide this square root of 2 by 4k, then you have a wrong answer. You must divide it by this one. Okay, if I give the curve of frequency as with a unit of hertz, you must type it with 2 pi, such that you get a radius per second. Then you divide this value by omega c. Okay, that's very important. And it's very picky that sometimes you know how to do it, but just because you miss this two pi, then you got the answer. Okay, you must resist this temptation because this square root of two divided by four k, okay, this is a very nice number, right? Mm -hmm. But it's the wrong answer. Okay, must divide by this one. Okay, it happens every year means that this one has been tested every year, right? <laughs> okay, so you transform this G1, G2, you got this two value. Okay, if you choose this pi type, okay, this is pi type, right? Although there's a capacitor missing here, but it's still considered a pi type because the first component in this case is a capacitor. Oh, some of you may say, okay, this is not a first component, the first component is here, right? No, this is not part of a This is the source impedance. It comes together with the source. Okay. Similarly, this one is come together with the load. If you look at the filter itself, only including this component and this component. <coughs> Sorry. All right. So this is the pi type. Okay. So how about the t type? T type is this one. Okay. Then some of you may ask, how come there's two? There's two components. Same thing. The reason is because this G1, G2 are equal. It happens to be, okay, only for n equal to 2. You can even say this. For other n value, you never say this. Don't make assumption all the n are equal, all right? Or all the GI are equal, okay? It's only for n equal to 2, it happens like this, all right? And also, this value are modified using a, this, this GI divided by omega C. Take out your calculator. Try to find out what's the value. Even by square root of two divided by twenty-five k. What's that? <coughs> Is it fifty-six micro? Right. Okay. <coughs> haven't finished yet. We haven't finished yet. Last step. We need to verify the result. So remember in your lab two. After you design your low pass filter, your high pass filter, whatever, right? The last step, you don't rest on it. You don't rest at this step, okay? Yeah, one more step. You need to verify your result. Okay, you could forget it. You definitely will lose mark. Okay, so the next step, we need to verify the transfer function of this one by looking at the photo clock. Okay, here is the photo clock. This is the pass band, okay. the response is, how come it's zero here? How come the response actually is zero? Why? What 
response amplitude is only zero in the path frame because I, I will try to define low path frame to allow this range of frequency go trade, right? But now you see the amplitude is zero. Is it correct? Yeah, zero dB means here is zero dB. Zero dB, if you look at the torino value, is supposed to be one, right? Right? One is zero dB. So which means for this portion, its response is unique and this is one. Whereas for this portion, its response is attenuated gradually. And also, we want, because according to our design, we want to have order n equal to two. So we're supposed to get a runoff rate at 10 times n, which is 40 dB per decade, right? Okay, so from here, if you look at your lecture, it'll be more clearer. Here, this is not very clear, okay? From here to here, it's one decade away. Means the frequency at this point should be 10 times of this point. Okay, let's, that's what we say, one decade, right? One decade. So one decade away, the corresponding rolling off or transition from here to here, you look at the vertical axis now. From this point to this point, okay? It's actually minus 40 dB. Okay, it's actually minus 40 dB. Okay, it means that, okay, our design is correct. For the volume of region, there's one more thing we haven't verified yet. What is the cutoff frequency? Okay, we're supposed to design a low path filter with a cutoff frequency 4 kHz, right? Okay, where's 4 kHz? 4 kHz is here. Okay, this is a 1K, right? 10 raised power 3. 1K, 2K, 3K, and 4K. Okay, we go all the way up here. Okay, this is 4K. But how many dB here? I don't know. Of course. I use the software to solve this one. I can show you the value, which is uh, 3 dB away. Minus 3 something, 3.01. The actual value is this one. From here, okay. Minus 3.01, okay, at this point. In your simulation, in your lab means, you also have a similar function in your software. You put a marker there, it will show you the value of this point, both for the frequency and amplitude, so you don't need to worry about it. But you need to put a marker there, show the value for this part, like what, what I've done here, okay, in your report. All right? So, one more thing is that, if I'm, I'm not measuring the volume of here, I won't measure the volume from this point all the way down here. Is it correct? Most equally, it's not equal. Why? Why? Because when we say it's rolling off at 20 times n dB, we are talking about those are linear region, which means this is a straight line. Whereas here and somewhere here, you see it's not a straight line, it's a curve here, right? It's a curve here. And the slope of this curve cannot be measured by a single value. It's obvious that if you measure starting from this point down to here, you cannot get minus 40 dB per decade. All right, so in other words, when you try to measure the volume rate, try to find the linear region, like this one. Not starting from here or here. All right, try to avoid this region and this region. Of course, you cannot choose this one, right? Because this is a path back. Path back left no volume off at all, okay? So now the point is here. In our original problem, we say that the cutoff frequency is 4K, and from 4K to 40K, I want to attain it at 40 dB. Now you tell me you will never measure the volume off by considering this point, right? So that's why I'm saying actually the problem. There's some uh, the, the, this question is not proper set, but never mind. I try to illustrate how we can do the design. That's all we want from this example, okay? <coughs> All right, another example. Design a high pass filter with the cutoff frequency 40 kHz. The power attenuation requirement is 
40 dB from 40 kHz to 4 kHz because we're talking about high pass now. All right, we're talking about high pass now. So the cutoff frequency, uh, the, the, the low pass filter is going to run off from a higher frequency to a low frequency, right? Because it will reject the low frequency component and allow the high frequency component to go through. Okay. Then uh, the low for the source and uh, uh, the impedance for the source and load are both are one ohm. Okay, we just consider the simplest case. All right. Similarly, we can we follow the step just now. First one, I want to find out what's the order. Okay, I need it. So twenty times n volume rate, right? Times the number of decades from forty k to four k. Okay, mass greater or equal to four dB. A equal to again. We have two examples A equal to two, but it doesn't mean that you always have a A, a equal to two problem, okay? Uh, we just want to illustrate some difference between the low pass and high pass here. That's why we choose A equal to two in both examples. Okay, but it doesn't mean that we will only test you up to A up to two, alright? Similarly, we got these two parameters, G1 and G2, which are Again, happen to be group two, all right? So those are low pass prototype parameters. Okay, this point and this point is talking about a low pass, corresponding low pass, uh, low pass prototype. Okay, although this one is designed high pass filter, we still starting from a low pass prototype. Okay, yeah, we find out that order, the corresponding order and corresponding parameters low pass prototype first. The next step, we transform the parameter for this low pass prototype to a high pass filter. Okay, so how we can do the transformation, I just show you just now from this table. Okay. Originally is an inductor and it becomes a capacitor and its value is modified by this equation. Originally is a capacitor, now it becomes an inductor with its value modified by this one. Okay. First step, uh, again, we need to find out what's the corresponding cutoff frequency. Okay, again, resist the temptation to use this 4dk directly. Okay, you must multiply it with a 2 pi, which gives you 250k radius per second. Okay, 250k radius per second. Okay, 250k, just now we're talking about 25k, right? Why not become 250k? Because now the cutoff frequency here is 40k, not 4k. Alright, that's why you got a higher cutoff frequency here. Okay, then according to the table I showed you just now, you modify this g1, g2, then you got this two, this value. Okay, because it's exactly the same for this one, so it's got the same value for L and C. But be careful, in a low pass prototype, you need to modify or it knows L to C and C to L. Okay, and also change the unit. Okay, don't say, okay, this capacitor is 2.8 mu F here. No. F is for the capacitor, H is for the F, uh, F is for the capacitor, H is for the injector. Right? Okay. <coughs> So according to our paper, can you find out what's the circuit? Let's say, let's say T type or pi type. Can you sketch what's the what is the circuit? Okay. Take out your pen and paper. Try to find out what's the circuit structure for both T type and pi type. Take out your 
pen and paper try to sketch the high pass filters circuits. I want to share your circuit for the T type. Come. Anyone have to find out your T type? <coughs> T type. Anyone? Okay, let's 
see your solution. Are you fine? Tea time. Yes. It's okay, it's okay. Do you want to share with us? It's okay. Don't worry, I won't, I won't penalize you. This is for the pi type, this is for the key type. Are you okay with this? Any? Any different opinions? Do you agree? Agree? Is it correct? You look at the two configuration for the pi type. This is the first component, right? Right? In this two configuration, the pi type, the first component is supposed to be it's supposed to be a capacitor, right? So how come this is a resistor? Inductor. Should be a capacitor or inductor? Sorry? Yes, it's correct. Must be an inductor. Remember in the paper, the first column and the second third column, right? We design a high pass, we must replace the original. If you look at a flow path profile for this for this one, here is supposed to be a capacitor, right? Here is supposed to be an inductor. Okay. Then during our modification of the parameters or the transformation of parameters. We need to change this capacitor to an inductor, and its value must be modified according to this equation or this formula. So that's how we get the two point eight mu at mu edge, all right? And same for this one. That's why the first component here becomes a inductor instead of a capacitor. Okay. Similar for the second configuration, the T type. Okay. In T-type, the first component, or in the low path prototype, the first component is supposed to be an inductor. Okay. Because we are trying to design a high pass filter, we must change this first component. Originally, it's a 
deductor, right? To a capacitor here. Same for this one. Okay, this two value I just give you an example already. So you just need to put a proper value to the proper unit here. Don't put 2.8 mu h here, all right? Must be f because this is capacitor. All right. Okay, very good, very good. This is the first time I see we got the correct answer actually. In the past two semesters, more or less we got some problem. Okay, very good. So this is for the first chapter. All right. If you want to see more about filter design, you can do that. You can do reference book. Okay. So we have finished the first chapter. In the first chapter, we review some knowledge in the coil transform. Okay, so now I'll be taking 2023 and the, the first chapter in this module. So you ask yourself, yourself a question. What is the meaning of the coil transform? What is the meaning of the coil transform? How to differentiate coil transform of a signal and the coil transform Transfer function of system. Right? Foil transform itself actually try to analyze the signal instead in the time domain, which we are all time domain is x of t, right? Now foil transform try to analyze the signal in the produce domain. And as we show in some examples, if the, the signal got two sinusoids, right? The composite of two sinusoids. If you look at time domain, the waveform is quite complicated, it's quite messy. See anything in the stage. But if you analyze the signal in the previous domain, it becomes very clear. There are two paths okay, in, in, at each of these frequencies, which is true for the biases and water, remember? Right? So in previous domain, this property becomes very obvious. And also, you can analyze signal go through a system by looking at the transform, the foil transform of signal and the foil transform of the system in pulse response. Like the example I showed you, if the signal I mentioned just now go through a low pass filter, then what happens? Output. Okay, and what's the effect? Okay. Another thing is that how to characterize or how to represent a point transform. As we know in signals, we need two plus. Why is the Amplitude spectrum, the other one is the phase spectrum, right? Okay, why is the amplitude spectrum and the other one is the phase spectrum? But actually, there are different ways to represent this. Let's say, for example, amplitude spectrum. Actually, we have two types of amplitude spectrum single sided and double sided, right? We can represent the spectrum of signal use either single sided or double sided. So what's different between the single sided and double sided? If you talk about the single sided, that means the spectrum only has its component at positive frequency okay, on, on this side. Okay. If you talk about double side, they must have some component at the negative frequency side. But in most of case, they are symmetric. They're symmetric. So what's the difference in these two representations? Single side, double side. Okay, so you need to think about this one. Next, next question: Previous domain representation of this cosine waveform. If you talk about double side spectrum, you're supposed to see two spectrum, two spectrum line, right? At a given frequency of this sinusoid. Let's say if the frequency of this sinusoid is 10 hertz, then you're supposed to see a spectrum. Uh, spectrum line at 10 hertz and minus 10 hertz, both with the amplitude of 0 0.5. Okay, both with amplitude of 0 0.5. Then, if you want to use the single side spectrum, you're supposed to see a spectrum line at frequency 10 hertz with its amplitude 1, not 0 0.5 this high. Okay, 
okay? Not to confine this time. Now, there's a very typical question I want to ask you. What's the power of this sign of What's the power of this sign of Have you think about this question? What's the power of this sign of So when you compute the power, of course, I'm talking about average power. Okay, I'm talking about average power. So when we say average power means that you have to do integration, right? So if you do integration for the time soil, what do you have? Integration over one period, then divide by one period, what do you have? What do you have? So how many of you say it's zero? Is it zero? So what's the value? What's the value? Is it fine? Try to find on the power of the signal. Okay, if you don't know how to do it, there's several ways actually. Remember there's uh, some theorem called Pasqua theorem, right? Pasqua theorem tells you you can compute the power of a signal in the previous domain. Am I right? Mm -hmm. So if you're talking about this one, so what's the Fourier series for this one? It's just one parameter, right? C1 equals to 0.5. C minus 1 equals to another 0.5, right? So if you talk about the power of this one, you should square of both parameters and sum them together. 0.5 squared equals to a quarter, right? And another 0.5 squared got another quarter. To sum them together, what do you have? Yeah, very good. In other words, we say that the power of this one is 0.5. This sign side is 0.5. Okay, now let's change the number here. Instead of having this sign sinusoid, I have uh, another sinusoid is 10 times sine into pi ft. What's the power of this sinusoid? How many what for this sinusoid? 10 times sine into pi ft. We're supposed to see C's two spectrum line if you talk about double line, right? Mm -hmm. We're supposed to see two spectrum line. Y at the frequency, okay, let's say again 10 hertz, okay? One at 10 hertz, the other one at minus 10 hertz, right? With its amplitude, both are phi, right? This time we got phi, phi. Okay, now tell me what's the, what's the energy, or what's the power? Five square equals to plus another five square. What do you have? That's how we get the power of a sinusoid. Okay, that's from the previous domain. Actually, it's quite easy as long as you know how to find out the spectrum for a sinusoid. Alternatively, if you don't want to do this in the previous domain, you can do it in the time domain like this. Okay, so if you imagine like this. Okay, I have a sinusoid go through a resistor. This resistor has an impedance of one ohm. Okay, the resistance is one ohm. So according to you Ohm's law, because the voltage across this resistor is just cosine to pi FT. Okay, so according to Ohm's law, the power consumed by this resistor should be U squared divided by R, right? Am I right? U squared divided by R. You still remember the power consumed by resistor is the voltage across this resistor times the current go through this resistor, right? Mm -hmm. So in this case, U equals to cosine two pi t, right? 
So u times i equals to u squared divided by r. Am I right? Am I right? Almost more, right? So the power consumed by this resistor is cosine squared 2 pi f b. But this is instantaneous power consumed by this resistor because it's time function, right? Okay, so I need to take the integration. That means I calculate in one period. And then I take average divided by t. Okay, so this is the so-called average power of this sinusoid. Okay, average power of this sinusoid. So next step is just purely mathematics. Okay, I can find that okay, the integration gives me r, which is consistent with our previous conclusion in the previous domain. Remember? Our original conclusion for the power of this signal from the previous domain is half, right? The same as this one. Okay. This one may just show you how to do it in the previous domain using Pascal's theorem. Get it? Okay. Don't worry about the integration in this step, okay? I'll show you how it happens here later. Okay, you just need to know how to calculate the power in time domain. I need to do that. This is the instantaneous power. Okay? I need to take average. How to do average? I integrate over one period and divide by period t. This is the average power, right? And then this one gives me System, we have two ways. One is in time domain using impulse response. So, what's the impulse response? The impulse response is defined like this. If the input of the system is delta x or delta t, okay, if you use replace x by t, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, it's supposed to be t here, right? I think I put a typo here. Okay, if the input signal is a delta function, then yeah, you don't have. <laughs> That's why I need you guys to attend the lecture. If those are missing, missing this, this lecture opportunity, miss this material. Okay. Don't worry, you don't need to photocopy this one. I will upload this later. <coughs> Just follow. I know you guys are learning stuff. Until the exam or quiz, you never touch the next note. Right? I know that. My wife also graduated from our department many years ago, of course. She told me that yeah, uh, when she was a, was a student, only busy in the last two weeks. Before that, she very happy to enjoy life again. <laughs> but this shouldn't be. That's why every time you finish a module, after a, well, after a vacation, you forgot everything. You know, that's not good. All right, let's go back to here. So transfer function, uh, the, the impulse response is defined by like this. The output divided by the input, okay? In this case, input is a function, okay? So you got the impulse response. You take a Fourier transform of this HT, Impulse response, you got a transfer function HF in the previous domain. And this HF, if the system is the LTI system, this HF uniquely characterizes the system. In other words, if you have two systems, I don't know what it is inside, two black boxes, right? Two black boxes. If I input a delta T for both black boxes, I got the same output as the output of these two black boxes. Then I say that those two box actually are same to me. Although inside they may be implemented in a different way. For example, low pass filter. Okay. One may be implemented using the shunt capacitor configuration. The other one may be use the serial inductor configuration. The circuit are different. But the transfer function are same. 
to me, there's no difference at all. Okay, there's no difference at all. Because they are viewed at the same system. That's why I say Ash app will fully categorize the system. Okay? Uh, later, then we're talking about the bottles filter design. Okay? And also, we're talking about the empty spectrum, how to reject the green one by using a low power filter. But we have something like this. The red one plus the blue one here. There's no way to separate them. Like, no matter what kind of filter you use. Why? Because the spectrum overlap each other. That means in this frequency range, you got both the red one and the blue one. So there's no way to separate them. Okay, in other words, the receive side cannot differentiate these two signals at all. That's why we need to make use of modulation. That means we shift the signal spectrum of this signal, this signal, to other different bands. It will solve our problem, as we will see in the next chapter. All right? Okay, I think the bottle field to parameters uh, should be okay because I have emphasized this just now. Okay, so when you design a bottle filter, there's some questions. Okay, how to map this parameter GI? If it is a low pass, practical low pass, if it is a practical high pass, how to map this GI, okay? Then uh, in your second lab, okay, try to apply both configurations in question two, okay? The shunt capacitor, the pi time, and the P time, okay? See what is the output, of, see what is the transfer function for both configurations. So there are two configurations here, right? And uh, given that this table will be given, no matter in a lab or in a uh, quiz, right? So don't worry about this. How to calculate this parameter? Okay. So that's all for the review of first chapter. Uh, we take a break. We come back at seven thirty. Okay. Then we are, we will look at chapter two.